I have 100 days to beat Ark Arborarshan. The land of dinosaurs has changed and instead of dodos and parasaurs, there are reapers and rock drakes. I need to navigate my way around this broken planet to survive and uncover the secrets of what might have consumed this world. I started my journey by scratching my extremely itchy forearm. Because of my specialty in surviving, I picked up a few sticks and stones to craft my first pickaxe. I was naked and afraid, so I put on some clothes before murdering an innocent citizen of the Dino Kingdom. Your dead son? I came across an extremely ugly dog with a light attached to its head, so I decided to feed it a mushroom to make it my pet. Dude, I'm a goat. Of course I had to give it a unique name. Bulb. <laughs> Bulb dog. I began crafting bolas and arrows to protect myself from the nasty Ohio creatures in aberration. It wasn't long before I came across a giant scorpion. Thankfully, I prepared for this, and I ended this woman's career. Another giant scorpion tried to save her, but she met the same fate. No! Thank god I'm a beast. I came across some green crystals that I would harvest to make a spyglass. I was getting hungry, so I ate some mysterious black mushrooms. It wasn't a good idea. How did I just pass out? After waking up from my slumber, I spotted a pack of ravagers, and I knew I had to tame the alpha of the pack. There's a level 4, level 8. Ooh. That's a nice one, level 36. Ravagers are versatile, and they can be used as pack dinos that can climb on vines and travel long distances. Before I could set up a campsite, I needed to neutralize all the threats in the area. Gotcha, bitch! Ah! Oh, no, no, no! Oh, shit, the level 64. Now it's dead. I placed down a mortar and pestle and began crafting narcotics that would be useful in making trank arrows. I also placed a refining forge to smelt some metal that I could harvest from the nearby rocks. Eventually, I had enough metal to place a smithy to make a crossbow, and I started construction of a wooden trap to lure the ravagers into. I can bowl the other ones, so I want this one right here. Got it. So I'll bolo this one. Oh. And then we can. Perfect. They were in the trap, but it wasn't going to hold forever. I quickly killed off the weaker ravagers of the pack so I could tame the alpha. Dude, he did so much damage to me with that one bite. <laughs> While I waited for the ravagers to come home, I opened a nearby supply crate only to be disappointed by a carpet. When I came back, the Ravager was tamed and I gave it an unforgettable name. Ravager. Bruh. I tried to take Ravager on its first hunt, but it must have been camera shy as he began running away the moment we had a Parasaur trapped. What are you doing? Dude, why is my Ravager just running away from me? After some therapeutic communication, I talked him into coming back and finishing off the hunt. I needed to tame an herbivore that I could gather more berries, so I set up another campsite to make more trank arrows. I settled on taming a low level stegosaurus. Tame, Stegio. Let's do this. With a new member added to my army, we asserted our dominance by attacking an overweight giraffe with a shorter than average neck. The body was harvested and I used the hide to make myself some new clothes that would attract all the girls. Stegio was able to gather a massive amount of berries and mushrooms. We'll sit here and farm some berries. Holy! <laughs> so for the rest of the night, I crafted as much narcotics as I could. On the morning of day three, Ravager started acting a little scared. <laughs> Look, my Ravager is shivering in his boots. <laughs> I was finally high enough level, so I made him a saddle. I told Stegio that I was leaving to get some milk as I never planned to come back. Like I said before, Ravager was able to climb vines so that we could get closer to the rare resources like metal. Holy crap. After exploring the lower level for a bit, I ran into a pack of raptors that pounced me and took all of my lunch money. Pack of raptors. Mother Oh my god, do something! Yeah, 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 Holy yeah. shit! When I spawned back in, another pack of raptors made me regret playing Ark Survival Evolved. What the f- 
I eventually picked up my gear, but the raptors had unfortunately made a snack out of my ravager. I placed down a new campsite and prepared to search for a new ravager to enslave. It was day 4 when I saw a pair of stegos enforcing the law on the local gang members. Damn, get clapped, kid. Holy crap, all these raptors got clapped as well. Stegos are uh, laying down the law. Eventually, I came across the almost perfect level Ravager. Level 8. That one's trash. Level That's also level 8. Holy crap. That one's level 68. It's nearly one level off from the perfect... Yeah, it is. It's one level off from the perfect level. We need that one. I placed another wooden trap and pelted him with arrows until he fell asleep. There you go, he's unconscious now. I've been struggling with giving good names so far, so I thought really hard about this one. Ravager, yeah, that's a good one, Ravager. Me and Ravager returned back to the campsite and murdered another giant giraffe. I used Ravager to harvest more resources in order to craft a better kit. I don't need this hide armor. Anymore. Bruh. Oh sh! I took off my pants. There wasn't enough metal in this area, so I continued searching for a base spot that didn't have too many hostile dinos, but also had enough resources to grow. Eventually, we descended into an area known as the Blue Zone, where I started noticing a few more aggressive creatures. I settled on building near a cliff where my Ravager could climb up and down with a zipline. I'd be able to harvest the rare resources below and climb back up to safety when I was done. I set up a substantial amount of refining forges and prepared the zipline to gather metal. Where can I find metal? Oh, I think these are metal rocks. Oh my god! I was ambushed by a Megalosaurus, one of the strongest dinos in Aborotion. So far, none of my Ravagers lived to see past day one. I eventually made it back down to my body where I picked up what remained of my kit. I forced myself to make yet another wooden trap and I load a pack of Ravagers into my trap. It really didn't matter if I tamed them. I'm pretty sure they were gonna die anyway. This time, I would give my dino a real name. ra Vage. Ravager? Yeah, that's a good one. Right before I left the area, I spotted an even higher level Ravager that I couldn't resist. Unfortunately, one of the Ravagers in the trap seemed to jump a little higher than the rest. On God, I hate this game. You know what? It's chill. It's chill. Ravager. Yeah. Ravager. Ravager was a little stronger than the previous Ravagers, but he still struggled to take down dinos like the Spinosaur. Oh sh! I almost died. Standing by these light plants heals your dino. I came across a dead Carquinos, which was an excellent source of polymer, a resource needed to advance to the industrial stage. I was still in utter shock at how fast I was killed by the Megalosaurus, so I wanted to tame one for myself for protection. <gasps> what? I'm so dead. How did I even mess that up? Imagine being me, dude. Oh! Making a trap probably wasn't the smartest idea, so I stood on a cliff and shot Trank arrows down to the Megalo below. There you go, it's knocked out. While my Megalo was taming, I harvested some of the metal rocks nearby to fill up my forges.
After a while, I spotted a level 92 Megalo, which is going to be an insane powerhouse if I could tame it. This time, I made a stone trap that I was sure was going to work. Come on, get out of there. It's not trapped, it's definitely not trapped. Don't do No 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 Let go of him, oh my god. Please? So I lost three Ravagers now, but at the very least, I could get this high level Megalo into the trap. It wasn't big enough. It wasn't big enough, boys. It was not. It was day seven and it was time to start crafting the new kit. I plan to improve my stone trap and still tame the high level Megalo. Two seconds later. All right, so basically I was so mad, I uh, forgot to record it. Bruh. I got the high level Megalo in the trap, but he somehow got to my Megalo and murdered me and my Megalo. I was forced to go back to base and tame a new light pet and repair my kit. Oh my god, did it just get out? Stop. Thank you. or Megalosui. Megalosui was so powerful that he could kill Rockdrakes and anything else that was going to get in my way. I didn't even bother making a trap for this new Ravager, as I knew it was just gonna die in 30 minutes. I headed down below for another resource run and Megalosui protected me perfectly. Boys, I just wanted to let you know really quickly to join the Discord and give me a follow if you want to see me do these playthroughs live. Nice. I farmed until my Ravager couldn't carry any more metal and we climbed back up to my base. This method of farming was going to be way too slow. I needed to tame a Carquinos because those dinos can carry an infinite amount of weight with their claws. With the metal I had just farmed, I crafted a catapult and prepared boulders to knock out the giant crab. It was day 9 when I started climbing back up to the river to look for a Carquinos. After about 15 minutes of searching, I found a crabby that would serve me for the rest of his life. 36 is good enough. I placed down a special type of trap so that I could launch boulders onto the crab with my catapult. Yes, yes. No, let me go, let go. It should be traps now. There you go. Perfect performance. While I was waiting for the Karki to tame, I noticed the Spinosaur getting closer and closer. I needed to kill it before it walked over to the Karki and killed it. Dude, you're kidding me. Rest in peace, Ravager number 5. Dude, this game, man. 
After running for almost 20 minutes back to base, I finally had a Carquinos that was ready to be put to work. Come on, Carquinos. I crafted it as saddle and grabbed the nearby Ankylosaurus to tame. <laughs> Look at how easy this is going to be. The Carquinos can hold smaller diodes in the air while you shoot Trankos, so I didn't need to make a trap. Just like that. I decided I would tame another Ravager as well for some reason, and honestly you shouldn't be surprised if this one ends up dying later in the video. If you're looking for a server to play that's wiping soon, I'm releasing Vancey's Arc and Vancey's Duo for PlayStation and Windows respectively. Both the discords to the server will be in the description of this video, so whatever platform you play on, I got you. My Anki was tamed, so it was time to start harvesting more resources. We found a spot with a large amount of metal and I spent some time clearing out the area. We worked all the way until day 10 until I decided it was time to go back to base. We were below, but the Karki has an ability to throw dinos, so I threw my Anki up to safety. Never know until you try. Let's do this. Oh yeah, it's making it up there. Goodbye. In order to keep up with all the metal I needed to smelt, I crafted a chainsaw and took ravioli to harvest some wood. Some trees? While I waited for the resources to refine, I wanted to tame another Megalo so that I could breed it with Megalosui. The offspring would turn out much more powerful as there is an imprint multiplier when they are young. I began taking my first steps deeper into the blue zone. Eventually, I came across a level 64 Megalo. Ooh. <laughs> I'll take it. I tried to get it into a trap, but my trap making skills seem to need some improvement. Wait, I hope I didn't make this trap too small. It looks like okay, it looks like it could get out, Loki. Okay. I'm just the actual worst at this game. Got it. Let's go! Yeah, here we go. Ooh, our Megalo tamed. Megalo. <laughs> That's a good one, right? When I tried getting back to base, I realized I wasn't going to be able to get my Megalo up the cliffs. The Carquinos can only carry small to medium sized dinos, and the Megalo was just too big. I stopped by my base to grab the resources to make some cryopods, and I took Carquinos to jump around the cliffs in search of a supply drop. I crossed paths with Stegio, and I told him I was just grabbing milk, and I promised to take him with me next time. Ooh, let's go, let's go! Yes! We can make two uh, cryopods. With the cryopod secure and Stegio in my pocket, I hopped my way home. I then returned to Megalo and brought him back to safety. Ah, uh, yes. We're back. Megalosui and Megalo started participating in sexual activity, and I made sure to watch the whole thing. In the end, she produced me an egg, and I placed it near an air conditioner to incubate it. No. With my extreme skill, I was able to hatch twins on my first try, and I named them Yummy and Tasty. While I waited for them to raise, I headed up to the river to start making some medical brews. These would be useful in restoring my HP every time I ran into a pack of raptors. Gotta fill up our canteens. The next thing I needed to do was trap a wild roll rat so that it could dig up some red gems. These red gems are useful for making gas collectors, which would collect a rare resource known as congealed gas balls. These gas balls are then used to craft hazmat suits so I can explore the final area of aberration known as the red zone. It did dig up some red gems. See, like he's mad now. I have one red gem though. What the? Never mind, I have 25 red gems. Okay, okay. Dude, let's go. Oh, I'm dying. 
I'm poisoned. Once I placed the collector down, I took Tasty on a murder spree down the river to level him up. There you go, that's good enough. Okay, we have a fully leveled Megalo now. One of the rare resources I needed to collect is electronics. And fortunately for me, using a chainsaw on tech dinos gave me lots of it. I also made sure to gather blue gems and crystal, as I would need it for my future base spot. Finally, on day 14, I had enough metal to make an industrial forge. It's a solid amount. I decided I would also make a chemistry bench, which would officially make me in the industrial stage of this journey. While the Anki was good for metal, I still needed to tame a Dota de Curious to gather a large amount of stone, which would be useful in making cementing paste. Oops. Hey guys, look at this. Stone is level 69. <laughs> <laughs> Ian Stone brought home tons of stone. There we go. That's a lot of stone now. Look at all that. I also checked on my gas collector to find that it was producing tons of gas balls for me. Got another 140. Congealed gas balls. I was finally preparing to get a rock drake egg, so at the end of day 15, I crafted an industrial cooker to make more med brews than I ever would be able to in a stone pot. All right, we're gonna sit here for a while. Let this let this cook up. I know it's a little boring, but gotta do it. I later came across another crack in the ground to which I placed a second gas collector, as I planned to make multiple hazard suits. Once I was at base, I crafted three hazard suits and a glider. In the red zone, there is a radiation that would kill me without a hazard suit. On day 16, I began my descent into the unknown. Man, this is sick. And then we should probably get our, our hazard suit on. I knew that once I found a drake egg, the entire pit of drakes would come and kill me. I had a master plan though, and I brought Tasty down with me in a cryopod to take down even the nastiest of creatures like your mom. Dude, I see an egg, I see an egg. Boys, boys, boys. Okay, but there, oh, I see two eggs actually. Let's go for this egg. It seems pretty alone-ish. Level 40, honestly, pretty good. Like, cause we're gonna use this Drake to get more. Okay, so here's the plan. Once I pick up this egg, all of the drakes are gonna start coming towards me. So let's let's put on a new set of armor, and then like basically, I I'm I think I know that my megalo is gonna take it on. I just like I'm afraid that for some reason it won't be strong enough. So let's just try. I'm gonna sit back in this corner so that I can't be like bitten from behind. Here they come. Oh yeah, this is easy. Dude, that was that went perfectly. I only I only lost 3k health. Here, let's just get let's just get these climbing picks. It's really quick. Let's see what's up. So that's a 48. Oh, 132. Should be fine. I did not think about that. I'm overweight.
Perfect. The egg was secure and the only thing left to do was take a long trip back to the surface. Is it? Is it? Okay, do I have to go there and then up there? Do I have to go all the way back there? Somebody says I should name the Drake Drake the Rock Johnson. That has got to be the absolute worst name I've ever heard in my entire life. We're home, everybody. We're home, suckers. Nearly an entire day later, I was back at base and ready to hatch the eggs. And once again, with my extreme skill, I hatched another set of twins. Pog champ! Let's get some W's. Let's get some W's in the chat. We got two drug drinks. I let the babies raise and went to gather some obsidian in order to make a harpoon gun. Towards the end of day 18, my drakes were raised and I gathered enough red gems from the roll rat to make a drake saddle. Check it out. Damn, this thing is powerful. I was streaming and wasn't paying attention and an earthquake ended up flying me off the cliff. Imagine. I don't know exactly how to say- it. Oh! I took Clammy Boy to explore a bit of the map and gather some notes to level up. The Drake is insanely maneuverable for aberration, and I think the journey down to the red zone was well worth it. Dude, it's so easy to get around Ab. This is amazing. Thanks for joining the Discord, boys. It benefits me and you so that you know when I'm streaming. Since the extra mobility was available to me, I made sure to craft more cryopods in another supply crate. Let's make a bunch of cryopods. On day 20, I crafted a harpoon gun that would be able to shoot net projectiles. This would make taming dinos 10 times easier, like when I found this high level megalo near the edge of the red zone. I wanted to prepare for the boss fight, so I tried my best to find more high level megalos to breed. Hooray! I also spent some time scouting out this new potential base spot that would allow me more space to breed and to build a better crafting station. I harvested some polymer and did another metal run until I had enough resources to place a second and third industrial forge. On abortion, oil is an extremely rare source but gliding to the bottom of the red zone made it easy to harvest as much as I could carry. The only problem was climbing back up took a lot longer than going down. On day 23, I decided it was time for a haircut. I was also feeling a little extra LGBTQ, so I painted my hair red. Uh, red ponytail. We can always change it if we want to later. I checked the gas collectors once again, and while I was refilling the generator in my base, another earthquake sent me flying down to Narnia. Are you kidding me? Bro. Oh my god. Get away from me, Carquinos. While patrolling the river, I came across a step bro that was stuck in the wall. What is that? Is that a new dino? Oh, that's a stego. Oh, this stego is a step bro right now. Look, steg bro. I'm stuck. The metal was cooking fast and I was eating it. If I wanted to live on this new base spot, I needed to clear out all the rocks and stones that were blocking my construction site. So, that's exactly what I did on day 28. I made sure to place the storage down so I could save the resources and use them later. On day 29, the job was finally finished, and I began placing down the first few cliff platforms. I don't want it that far. The cliff over there is uneven, so... There should be fine. Yeah, that's fine. I made sure to throw all of my dinos out so they would have more space to grow. Hey, little baby. Let's give him some meat. Hey, yo, I did another stone run to make more paste. I also needed more keratin to pair with the stone, so I headed to a surface entrance and harvested the bones with a mining drill. 
Before placing the foundations, I made sure to set up the electrical wiring for a cleaner look. See, that looks, like, that looks pretty sweet. Got some lights going. While I was out searching for more tech dinos to collect electronics, I came across yet another steg bro. He's stuck. It's another steg bro. Like, hey steg bro, I'm stuck. My drake wasn't going to be able to carry a whole lot of resources. So in order to future proof my cliff base, I started creating an elevator, which would be used to carry up to 6,000 pounds. Almost as much as your mom weighs. Boom, roasted. I would harvest the stone and metal below and transport it up with the elevator. Oh god, oh god. That was close. I did have to wait for more metal to smelt, so on day 35, the elevator was finally finished. Nice. I must say, it's a really slow elevate. Wow, this thing is... This is, a, this is actually painfully slow. I started making the world's best crafting station, no capping. Then we can do one more. Right? Yeah, it doesn't. If I stand here, will I burn out? No. I think I think the air conditioners actually have a huge range. So now I won't burn out when I'm standing underneath this. There you go. This will be our little crafting area. So that will be storage. And then we'll have an extra table right here. Perfect. On day 36, it was time to fill the forges. Two thousand years later. See if the weight is 5,400. So yeah, perfect. That is that is epic sauce, honestly. Whoops. So set that to the Anki. And then we'll put all the resources in here. One of these. Yeah, there you go. Wood into the industrial forges yeah that's 55k metal and i've i didn't check the how much wood but still good amount i wanted to get higher quality gear so i headed over to the surface of aberration you can only go to the surface at night or else the sun becomes too hot and you burn to death okay yeah we can go on the surface i don't know for how long though it's it's 21 on the clock. We might, if we, if we start burning up, I'm actually going to be so sad. The surface spawns supply crates with rare gear. So I took my Drake to see what I could find. Let's drop in on this. Did you guys see that? We got a 228 Mastercraft pistol BP. That is goaded. With my new blueprints, I crafted a Mastercraft pistol and let my neighbors know that there was a new sheriff in town. Let's give it let's give a few warning shots to the neighbors. Let everybody know that we're in we're in town. Mm-hmm. 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 
I then decided it was time to get impregnated by a reaper. The reapers are extremely powerful creatures, so I made this trap out of metal. I headed into the red zone once again and kited a reaper all the way back to the trap. When they're uh, underneath. Yeah. See what level this is. It's not telling me the level. Oh, <gasps> 76. Come this way. Let's go, Reaper. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Look at that. In order to get the reaper to impregnate you, you have to damage the queen until it's almost dead. And then it starts glowing pink. Tasty was the perfect dino to do this with, as his damage would penetrate the reaper's thick skin. Let's keep biting it. Any pink glow yet? No. A few minutes later, the queen was ready and I was ready to get violated. Still no. There you go. It's it's got the uh, pink light now. I need it to be aggro to me. There you go. There you go. Let's go. Once I was home, I began constructing a birthing place for the baby reaper, as I knew babies try to run away from you before they are juveniles. Perfect. So we'll just give birth in here and then this will be our airlock. And then we're good. Just a reminder to check out my Vancey's Arc servers for PlayStation and Windows. Discords are going to be in the description and leave a follow on Twitch. Just like in the movie Alien, a baby xenomorph eventually bursted out of my chest. Oh god. What are we naming it? Zeno. Dude, stop biting me. Oh my, I'm gonna name, I'm changing his name. Punk. Look, it wants to leave so bad. Dude, stop. Here, here's some food, bitch. Gosh. You can go raise on your own. I spent some of day 40 crafting gunpowder and ammo as I would need it to start venturing into the dungeons of Aberration. I did a bit of breeding as well, but wasn't getting any good stats on the offspring. Day 41 and 42 were mostly maintenance days. Raising dinos, crafting more gunpowder, and leveling up other dinos. I took Punk out to patrol the rivers once again, and I decided I would add the Spinosaurus to my collection of dinos. This thing is so strong and so fast. Dude, look at all these fish I'm killing. Oh my god, you can't net spinos. I'm trash. Alright, we're just gonna have to hide behind this rock. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. Which one is it? Is it that one? It looks like it's gonna die. At least it's stuck. It's like, it's like a step, bro. Oh my gosh, why did you run like that? Oh, there you go. Got a Spino. We need to get a male now. Ooh, there's a few more. 85 and 285s. That's not good enough. There you go. I need to kill this bear just in case. I don't want it to get angry at the Spino. While I was taming the second Spino, a Triceratops decided to get up all of in my business, so I reminded him that the Sheriff was in town. Hello, Triceratops. You want the smoke, huh? You want the smoke? Yeah, that's what I thought. Why? We'll see. Ooh, what are we gonna name our Spino? Let's name it Spino. Oh my god. On day 48 and 49, I was running more surface drops when I came across an amazing blueprint for a long neck. Nice. Very nice. We got a, a long neck BP. I no longer had a roll rat trap to collect red gems, so I took a mining drill into the red zone to harvest some myself. Are these red gems as well? 
Yeah, they are. On day 50, I was being chilling by the river when I was suddenly ambushed by two crocodiles. Oh my, oh my god, oh my god. Chill, chill, chill. I'm actually gonna die. After eliminating the threats, I started constructing a greenhouse so that I could grow myself some crops. These would be useful in making soups and cakes, which would benefit me while I'm dungeon crawling. These should be irrigated. Yeah, everything's irrigated, so... That'll be nice. I'm not sure if you guys remember Stegio from the beginning of the video, but somehow during the move, I must have misplaced him, and he was never seen again. Rest in peace, Stegio. So, I decided I would tame a new Stegosaurus in order to harvest the seeds for my garden. I ended up naming her 69420, and we harvested the bushes nearby. Another dino I would need to explore the caves was a Baryonyx, as there is one cave that can only be accessed by water. Get wrecked, Baryonyx. There also seemed to be a Gigantopithecus problem in the area, so I made sure to keep that under control. Oh, he got folded. On day 56, I made sure to restock my stone supply with stone. Bruh. Oh, I'm black box already. Finally, I did a little more breeding and farmed more polymer while I waited for the babies to grow. I continued searching the surface for more drops until the ground would start to burn, which would let me know it was time to leave. I took 69420 to harvest a few more seeds until I was finally ready to start seeding my crop plots. On day 61, I was finally back in the rock drake pit, where I had found an even higher level rock drake egg. Do we have any eggs? Yes, we do. It'd be nice though. What level is this? Ooh, 148. I think I do want this one. Later, nerds. Later, suckers. I placed the egg in the incubator, and on day 62, I decided it was time to build a war room. Should we just do a square? Is that good enough? I'm fine with that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think we'll make stairs on this side as well. Yeah, so that we can uh, walk through it like that. Three. Let's see if this works. There you go. This is where I would store things like cryopods, blueprints, weapons, and any other rare gear I needed to keep organized. Mmm. Okay, we got our loadout mannequins now. Sheesh, look at this. Our base is actually looking, starting to look like a real base. We're, we're, being, we're making progress. By day 66, my greenhouse was in full operation and I started harvesting the crops that were growing. There's a little bit of crops in it, in each one. I know it's extremely boring, so I won't show you all of it, but I was breeding a lot of dinos in order to prepare for the boss fight of Aberration. Later in the day, I sat in my chair overlooking this mysterious world and I started reminiscing about all the good times I had with your mom. Part of organizing my gear meant painting images, so I went full Picasso mode and expressed my artistic ability. I think it looks not too bad. What do you guys think? Okay, I think I'm gonna need to put the black coloring back on and fix these lines. What do you guys think? Does that look like the med brew? The only problem came when it was time to draw a saddle. How do you how do you paint saddle? What even is that? Oh my god. Whoops. Yo, that kind of looks like a penis. That literally looks like a dick. 
And then there's like a red, and then there's like a circle at the bottom. <laughs> I mean, it looks better. Oh my freaking god! I, <laughs> I just realized what it. <laughs> it looks even worse. I just wanted to take this time to commemorate the best day of all time, day 69. We spent countless hours fighting our way through aberration, trying our best to make it to day 69. And it's finally here, the greatest day the world has ever seen. 69 is the perfect number because while I was doing a metal run, my Karkido somehow learned to use the force. What? Look at this. The Enki is just being carried like by the force or something. In order to gather honey for vegetable cakes, I needed to tame a dire bear. While I was waiting for it to tame, I sprung into action and saved this iguanodon's life from a carnosaurus. We saved him. Thank you! You're lucky to live today, Mr. Iguano Guano. Go on with your life. Learn from that mistake. No! There you go. We can name it Dire. Nah, let's, let's, let's name it Dire Bear. On day 76, I started leveling up a Baryonyx that I had raised to prepare it for the dungeon. Unfortunately, I was later jumped by yet another pack of raptors. Dude, what? I'm getting jumped. Get off me. <laughs> I, almost, I almost died to a pack of raptors. Dude, that is so dumb that raptors can just do that. Get off me. Holy shit. I'm actually like... I hate it here. I want to go off. After collecting myself and wiping away the tears, it was time to start exploring the caves. The first one would be the easiest, as most of it could be traversed using Tasty. Where'd the other one go? I know we can fit in here. There's a Megalo right here. Oh, that's a Carno. Look how many dinos are over here. Here we go. Artifact Depth. The next cave was found deep in the red zone. Here's the cave. Thankfully, the Drake's ability to climb on walls made it very easy to avoid all the enemy dinos. After a few minutes of searching, it seemed like I couldn't find the artifact, so I put up a new Blitz video and watched the tutorial. Before going to the location of the artifact, I found a supply crate with the absolute most streamer loot item you could ever ask for. That is so scripted. That's like exactly what we need for the Rocco boss. This literally looks scripted, but rest assured this moment was captured live on my stream, which you should definitely join when you have the chance. Oh, I hear it. Oh, it's right there. Yeah, it's right in front of us. Okay, we have to kill these dinos. The final cave had a secret underwater entrance, so I used my baryonyx to take me down.
What is this? Doesn't seem to want to let me, like, climb up. There you go. This was an extremely difficult cave as there were electric eels and jellyfish in the water passages. I had to be especially careful of the jellyfish because they would dismount me from my baryonyx and I would definitely get killed by all the eels. Shoot, I forgot about that. We can take him out with the spear gun. Damn, that was a 150. Okay, I have net projectiles. I think we can we're gonna net this. There you go. There's the artifact. Nice. Let me just kill this thing. Artifact of the shadows. All that was left to do was craft some consumables and a few veggie cakes as I was finally ready to take on the boss. I made my way down to the deepest part of Aberration, where I would find a terminal that would transport me to the arena. Let's throw out boss. I tossed out all of my dinos that I had raised, and I prayed I would survive this challenge. Yeah, this is going to be such a cake walk. Look at this. This is so easy. Everything was going well, and I was slowly chipping away at the boss. Yeah, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to lie. I'm like slightly focusing up a little bit because I'm afraid I'm going to die. Okay guys, we're halfway there. Halfway there. Halfway boys. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. There's a reaper. There's another reaper, oh my god. I saw that I was near the end until this happened. Holy shit, I almost died, I almost died, I almost died. So I am in fact a straight up loser and I wasn't able to beat Aberration. I definitely could have kept trying more but I had lost my shotgun and my dinos. I knew I would have had to wait until after day 100 to beat the boss again. If you enjoyed the video make sure to join my discord in the description and check out the servers I'm launching for PlayStation and Windows. As always you should leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. I will be live streaming on YouTube as well so stop by and say what's up. As they always say, when life gives you lemons.